Personal notice. Dangerous my stock and trade. Except today. If you've got a job that's too tough for you to handle, then it's too tough for me. Merry Christmas, George Valentine. And don't bother me with details. Standard Oil Company of California, on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West, invite you to Let George Do It. Santa Claus in Glass, a transcribed adventure of George Valentine. Stabbed, I said. S-T-A-B-B-E-D. Stabbed. This bird's been stabbed. What did he say we should do, George? Listen, Johnson, I don't want to work on Christmas any more than you do, but... Did you you tell him that's the way we found him, George? Hold it, Brooksy, I can't hear you. Yeah, that's right, Johnson. He was all trussed up and everything, but... What? Head? What head? He doesn't have one, naturally. That's the point. The knife must have... Oh. Oh, I get it, Johnson. Okay, see you later. Well, George? Hey, what happened to the radio? Ah, there we are. For heaven's sake, it's almost three o'clock. What did he He say? He says, his wife says, just put some stuffing where the butcher tore the skin and shove it in the oven. Oh, thanks. I thought you told me you knew how to cook a duck. Well, I do, stupid, but the skin's too tough to sew. It just never occurred to me to use stuffing at both ends. Relax, I said. You know, I like the way you baste that critter. (laughs) Just like my mother used to do Efficiency and tender care. There's a real art to it. Oh, I'm full of old-fashioned virtues. You know, it's funny the things you remember about Christmas. We always had the whole family for dinner, including a spinster aunt who played the little star of Bethlehem on a cornet. (laughs) Cornet? (laughs) We had a second cousin who yodeled after his third eggnog. (laughs) Oh, George, after all this time, there's still so many things we don't know about each other. Angel, come here. Come on now, put that spoon down. Yes, darling? Well, the mistletoe is in the other room, and the kitchen is not very romantic, but, uh... Well, this has been a pretty swell Christmas. The best we've ever had together. So all kidding aside, thanks. Oh, you're welcome. You're very welcome. No, we still have some work in there setting the table. Yes, George. And some more music to hear. Enough to last us till next year. What's the matter, Brooksy? Oh, George, I can't help thinking. I know it's Christmas, but that silly ad you put in the paper, don't bother me with details. Oh, nobody even read it. It's just daring people to bother you, George. Look, it's afternoon already, isn't it? Has anybody been bought... George, don't answer the door. It's too early for anybody for dinner, and it's too late for... Hey, hey, this is your apartment, not mine. Nobody knows I'm here. Christmas is for us, George, and for happy people. It's not for trouble and danger it's, and all... It's for a little faith in human nature, Angel. Everybody else feels the same way we do. What do you want to bet this is only a... Well, hello. Who are you? You were looking in the keyhole. Yeah, that's right. Uh, uh, Merry Christmas. Yeah, same to you. But uh, aren't you liable to get hurt doing that? No, 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 not, not today. Nobody takes offense. Peace and goodwill. Look, uh, who are you, friend? Uh, What do you want? Nothing. I don't want nothing. It's just a... Well, uh... (laughs) Merry Christmas. (laughs) There you are, Angel. See what I told you? I'm the new elevator man. My name's Ferdy. Oh. Oh! And according to my list, your name is Miss Brooks. But don't think I haven't noticed you already. You're a lucky man, sir. I said to myself, now there's a young lady with mistletoe in her eyes. Uh, Excuse me. I mean, thank you. Just a second. Hey, always get some... Never fails. Mistletoe in their eyes. They kind of like that kind of talk. Okay, so you're a student of human nature. Where did she go? Here, it's all wrapped. I meant to give it to you earlier. I'm sorry, I forgot. Oh, well, a little present for the elevator man. Now, ain't that a surprise? Oh, yes, yes, Ferdy, isn't it? I'm afraid it's not much. Don't you apologize, miss. Most exciting things come in little packages, I say. Oh, yeah, sure. I say that, too. 
Well, your problem's settled now, friend, so we'll see you later, huh? Hey, wait a minute. Uh, wait a minute there. Oh, George, who else did I forget to Search get a... me. Uh, hold it. I, I said I got a package delivery. I'll take it. I'm your man. Package? Who's it for? Uh, Mr. Eric Suchek. For him, huh? Who's Eric Suchek? Down the hall. He's an older man, sort of continental. I don't know what he does. I've never really talked to him, but he's... Very interesting looking. Down the hall, you say, uh, which door? I'll take it for you, Mac, I'll take it. Oh, uh, no, you won't. Special delivery service. Besides, I'm out for my own tips. Mr. Sue checks asleep. He told me to take anything I came for him. Asleep this time of day, you sure? Well, you guys figure it out. Come on, Angel, back inside. I wonder what it is, George. Such a fancy wrapping. Well, I don't know, but curiosity. Let's have back. it, Mac. I ain't got all day. Sue checks an actor or something, or used to be in Europe. Probably something romantic from a woman. Oh. Yeah. Now let's have the package, Mac, and here's your tip. Hey, what is this? George, look. It's he's... a present the lady just gave me. A necktie, I suppose. They always are. You need it worse than I do, Mac. Well, it's a little irregular. Sue Check will make it up to me. Merry Christmas, folks. Well, the holiday's getting a little commercial. Did you see? He gave him my necktie, my present. He just gave it away. Well, he expects something better out of suit We shouldn't have let him do it, Well, it's none of our business, Angel. That elevator man's up to something. I know he is. George, what... What do you suppose was in that special package? Hey, 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 stop it. Uh, how, how do you do? Uh, season's greetings, that, that sort of thing. Thanks. Uh, who are you? You don't mind if I step in for just a moment, do you? What? Thank you, thank you so much. Sure, sure. Come right on in. This is Grand Hotel. I beg your pardon. Oh, oh yes, I see. Well, I'm so glad somebody does. Uh, Farnham is the name, Leopold J. Farnham, and I assure you, I'm I'm more embarrassed than you are. Uh, I say you, you're having duck, aren't you? I can smell it. <laughs> I doubt if there's enough to go around, Mister Farnham. Maybe what you're looking for is a Tom and Jerry. Oh, no, please. Please, I, I, I didn't want her to see me, that's all. Her? I'm so sorry. It, it's, it's perfectly all right, really. I was just, uh, I was on my way to Suchek's apartment. Suchek, huh? Yes. Oh, he's quite a popular fellow. The old world charm, the gaiety, the hand kissing, that sort of... But your neighbors, you know him, of course. I'm beginning to want to. What's this, uh, who's this her, Mr. Farnham? Oh, just someone I saw coming off the elevator, a little, a little social faux pas, nothing more. I wanted to keep the day happy. She's gone down the hall now anyway, and I can slip to the stairs. But tell us why you wanted Much to... Much obliged, and I hope you enjoy that duck. <laughs> the Mad Hatter. Darling, what's going on? Wait a minute, wait a minute. A lot of mink coat down the hall there. Oh, knocking at Mr. Suchek's door. Yeah. So that's the woman Mr. Farnham was talking about. Yes, so. Come on, If other people can play games, I guess I can, now, too. Now, George, you stay here. Don't you dare get mixed up I, in it. Uh, I just want to tell her she's not knocking loud enough. Eric? Oh, Eric? Excuse me, <gasps> but I heard oh. the elevator man say Mr. Suchek was still asleep. What? Who are you? This is Mr. Valentine, and I'm Claire Brooks. I live next door, you see. But asleep? What's after three o'clock? What went on here last night? A party? Oh, of course. The man with all the friends. The idol of the dowagers. Well, they were very quiet. I mean, I heard people leaving his apartment long before midnight. My apartment, you mean. But it would be decorous, wouldn't it? As he's always so decorous. The model of behavior. Did you say your apartment? Of course it's mine. Quite a big one, you know. You don't think he could afford it, do you? I'm Mrs. Suchek. Uh, Mrs.? Or doesn't he tell his neighbors about his wife... Would it spoil that beautiful aura of tragic, unemployed European? <laughs> oh, you think I'm really nasty, don't you? I traveled a long way just to wish him Merry Christmas, that's all. And the roads from the country house are such a fright, such a dreadful... I, uh, I just think you didn't knock loud enough. Mr. Suchek. Hey, Mr. Suchek, wake up. He's really a light sleeper. Mr. Suchek. George... Well, I'll take it easy, both of you. But uh, hurry up with the key, will you? Well, I've got it here someplace. I never use it except when I entertain in town once in a while myself. Such a big place, but he takes care of it for me. At least he does that. There, is that one the key? Oh, yes. Here. Eric! Eric! George, stop her. You look for him. Well, it's, it's her house, not mine, Brooksy. 
Hey, what's the matter with you anyway? What do you what do you expect you to find? He's not here. Oh. Well, went out someplace. Okay, Mrs. Suchek, we'll just move you. She was on. here an hour ago. Huh? I had my chauffeur phone to make sure. Had him pretend he was somebody else. Eric doesn't like to be surprised. But I was going to surprise him anyway. That's why I couldn't understand that sleeping business. Funny he didn't wind the clock. What did you say? The clock had stopped last night, I guess. Milk is still on the back porch. Look, it's closer here. Oh, he just went out someplace. Why, his bed hasn't been slept in. Well, he went out last night, then. There's nothing to get all excited oh, don't about. don't leave me. Please don't leave me. All right, Mrs. Suchek. What are you so nervous about? Why do you think something's wrong? Oh, it's Christmas. I don't want to be alone. Oh, I don't know why I didn't stay in the country. There's a wonderful party out there. Sixteen people for the weekend. And the roads are so frightful. I always give huge parties on Christmas. It's one of the nice things about inheriting a lot of money. Why worry about a husband you don't like, anyway? What? Oh. Well, why not? I never know what he's up to. My friends in town think he's wonderful and so charming, and he's always getting into confidential little deals with them. My friends, mind you, not his. All so rich, and he just loves rich people. All right, let's get off the subject and turn on the radio. Listen. <laughs> I used to be a musician, you know. A very bad one. Studied in Paris. Yes, Mr. Valentine, I'm very nasty. I'm sorry. I'm worried about him. We're so far apart, and he's up to something. I don't know what it is, but... But it is Christmas. Oh, Mrs. Suchek, did you say your husband didn't have any money? What? <laughs> well, really, he's not a little boy, for heaven's sake. Running around without pocket money, he does get his allow... No. No, he doesn't work. Just charming, that's all. It was different 20 years ago. Over there, he was an actor. But then they closed the theaters in Europe. You can't live on pride forever, can you? Oh, run along, you two. This is absurd and ridiculous, and I'm tired and would like to take a nap. Okay. Come on, Brooks. George, I ask about money because he's got a bank book in there on his desk. Huh? And it shows a balance of several thousand dollars, all deposited in the last few months. Nosy. But he has notes about meeting people at all hours, too. Deliver shipment to Joe at 3 o'clock. Steamship docking at 7 a.m., Pier 52. Get bids from jewelers on... Anyway, that kind skip of... Skip it, skip it. But shouldn't we say something? And shouldn't we ask about that man who was just up Leave the hall... Leave alone, the... Brooksy. We don't know what kind of a guy her husband is or what he's up to. I wonder if she does. Or oh, are you coming, too? Yes, it's cold here. I don't like it. I'm going to run down to a hotel. Okay, which one? I want to phone you after I've had a little talk with the elevator man. Yes, he was so positive about Mr. Suchek being asleep. Never mind. See you later, Mrs. Suchek. Oh, wait a minute. Miss Brooks, you didn't see a mirror in there, did you? The room beyond? What? A mirror, a hand mirror. I left it here the last time. It's gold, it has my initials. And there's a diamond thing. Well, I guess it's just mislaid or something. It's not important. Never mind. George. Hey, what's the matter with you, friend? Nothing. I'm all right. Pretty, you were just lying We checked there. both elevators, couldn't I'm find fine, you. I'm fine, I tell you. But look at your room, all your presents Leave me are... alone. And thank you, Merry Christmas. Oh, yeah, a very merry one. Buster, who hit you? Nobody. You didn't catch that mouse with cheese. Nobody, I told you I'm all right. Leave me alone. Oh, yes, and nothing's going on today. And I suppose Mr. Suchek is fine, too. Your big operator friend who sleeps says you. I didn't do nothing and nobody hit me. All these presents... But where's that package of suit checks, the one you took delivery for? George, it's not here, is it? Is that why somebody hit you, Ferdy? I don't know a thing. And I'm sick of this job anyway, so goodbye and Happy New Year. Oh, George, what's going on? What is it? He's not sick of this job. He's just got an angle on a better one. Come on, back up to the lobby. Angle? Everybody's got an angle. But you were right. Somebody must have taken the suit check package away from him, Brooksy. What the heck kind of a thing this is? I... <laughs> Excuse me, Mac. Okay, don't mention it. Hey, wait a second. You live around here? Know where I can find a guy named Suchek? 
Uh, they got a package for him. Oh, no, not another one. Let me one. see. Sorry, it's insured. Well, I could take it for him. George. This ain't no Christmas present, buddy. It's from Holland, insured for 5000 Just tell Five me th- where... He's not at home. Says you. I got a phone number on him. I'll find out. And you look so trustworthy. Well, we're telling the truth. He's really not... I know, I know, lady. Ah, just give me the package. What do you think this badge and gun is for on us? Hello. Yes. Hello. Not at home, huh? Heh. George. What number did you dial? Armored delivery, Mr. Sujak. Oh, yeah, I was expecting you to call. You, you have a shipment for me. Number upstairs. What do you think, wise guy? Well, there's no apartment number, Mr. Sujak, so if you'll just oh, tell... Oh, I don't want it, please. I don't want that, that one. Not today. It's marked special. I'm sorry. I am home, but you'll have to wait delivery until tomorrow, please. Okay, sir. Eh, not at home. The things people will pull. And on Christmas, too. George, we were just upstairs. He's not there. What an operator suit check for a man with no dough, no job. Just a lot of connections through his wife. $5,000 packages. I don't blame Ferdy for getting interested. And one of the packages is missing. Yeah. Let's go see this mighty man. Find out what he is up to behind his wife's back. See him, but he's Double not phone, in... Angel. It's simple. That's why she thought he was home, too. Her chauffeur phoned earlier, remember? Double phone? Yeah, like some doctors have. A special service. Same number in two places. And and he doesn't want people to know. Well, George, it sounds to me more like a double life. Uh-huh. And one of them's not so good. Studio on the top floor, according to the phone company. Not quite as fancy as the apartment. Oh, but it'd be a lot more convenient for meeting the kind of people you wouldn't want in your wife's place. Oh, I don't know. They get him listed as being in the import export business. They. You. Hey, look who's here. Hello, Mr. Valentine. Been waiting. I saw you drive up and look around outside. Mr. Farnham. And you know my name now, huh? No, I don't have much time. Yes, of course I do. Well, I came to see Suchi. Yes, I know, naturally. You came because of his wife. She's a strange woman, but you decided she's unhappy and upset about her husband, and you wanted to help her. Well, you know everything. I've also found out you're by way of being a detective. I assure you, I've hired plenty of them myself in the past few weeks. So I thought you uh, might respond to a Christmas present. hundred dollar bill? Now, I can prove to you that I am perfectly honest. That's more than we can say for Suchek, don't you think? You didn't act like it. The way you ducked to avoid her... It's not very easy for... uh, A man who's in love with a woman whose husband... Well, anyway... You mean you and and Mrs... Oh, yes. Of course, of course. She was with me here just now to talk to one of the boarders in this place and to one of my detectives. Just now? Look, Farnham, what are you... She's going to meet me at the train, and I don't want to keep her waiting. Detectives watching Suchek? Those packages of his? This, This double phone? Did you find that he's a crook? I'm trying to explain nothing to you. That's what the hundred dollars is for. I don't want her to be any more upset or to know any more than is necessary. Buster, I'm getting sick and tired of all this fog. Maybe Suchek himself... I can don't even me. know whether he's up there or not. That's not the point, you see. If there's anything crooked, we will turn it over to the police naturally. Then what is the point? And why did you have detectives? Don't you understand the whole thing? Oh. Rich, proud woman who wouldn't divorce her husband because in spite of everything else, he was so... so decorous. Well, but why that phone? Why these surreptitious visits here? Flowers and wine and perfume. Now, good heavens, you weren't born yesterday, were you? Ah. (laughs) You hear that? Suchek doesn't play the piano. Another woman. Now, I'm sure you understand. It's Christmas. Mrs. Suchek knows all she needs to know now, so let's have no more trouble. Sure, sure. Okay, Farnham. Happy New Year. Thank you. Goodbye. Wait a minute, Brooks. Come on. George, he's right. You're not going to go Upstairs, I said, come on, fast. Yeah, what do you want? To see something with my own eyes, that's all. Don't mind if I come in, do you, Mr. Suchek? Get out of here. I'm another detective. They've been haunting you, huh? Well, what are you talking about? Nothing, I guess, nothing. But it's a woman's place, all right, isn't it? Yeah. Curtains, perfume, sort of simple taste, I beg but, your uh, pardon. That her picture over there? 
Where is she in the other room? Oh, hey, look. You gave her a gold mirror, didn't you? I told you to get out of here. Now, take it easy. Come get out of here, I said! You... George! Oh, George, you idiot! Go in Never mind, never mind. I'm all right. Come on, find me a phone. We're going home. Not until I've got Johnson to pick up that woman. What? You heard me, Mrs. Suchek. trouble, Mr. Valentine. I got her off the train all right, but the lieutenant says she can sue our shirts off. Thanks for bringing her here to Miss Brooks' apartment so fast, Sergeant. Hey, you better get down and prefer charges. Yeah, sure, and thanks again. Hello, Mrs. Suchak. You're insane, of course. I'm insane, too, leaving my country place today. No, you're not. Don't open your mouth to me, young man. Take it easy, now. Take it easy. Where did you get the package? George, it's the same original one, the one that the... It would be an understatement, wouldn't it, to say that's none of your business. Okay. Mr. Farnham gave it to you. How helpful. Now, will you please explain At least he's the only one who was around here to have known that Ferdy the elevator man had it. What? Well, that's past history, not important. You're quite a guy, your friend Farnham. (laughs) You meet up with some choice men. Mr. Valentine, I really think you are insane. I haven't the slightest idea of what on earth you I noticed think before that package has no return address on it. Also, pretty fancy wrapping. Now, uh, a member of a family never thinks of a return address. And, of course, you've got it again, so what is it? Your Christmas present to your husband? <laughs> like a bomb, maybe? Mr. Valentine, we used to be very happy until I became wealthy. Until he became worthless. I know. Like a fish out of water. Both of you. Living high, wide, and handsome. Let's unwrap it, lady. Oh. Yeah, it's me. Been waiting for you to get back, Valentine. I thought you'd figure it out. Thanks, Ferdy. But is that gun necessary? Yeah. I want the package, lady. No. Give, lady. Buster, you're not a very bright man. All day you've been out for a fast buck. Well, this isn't it. Is that so? Oh, give that back. Mrs. Suchak, I'll have to admit I'm a little curious myself. Yeah, that's more like it. Here we are. <gasps> A Santa Claus. How about that? Hmm. Paint's all chipped. Looks European. Glass. A glass Santa Claus. Well, Mrs. Suchek, I was curious too. But more about the way you and your husband apparently treated each other. You can't live on pride forever, you said. I don't want to talk about my husband. I know. And Farnham took you over there, and some boarder gave you the gossip. Some detective who'd watched your husband sneak in there once in a while on holidays. Please. And I went over myself, and I heard a phonograph record playing piano music. You used to play the piano, didn't you? Studying music in Paris? George, it was a phonograph? That's what first tipped me. Noel is a French carol, isn't it? What are you talking about? About how Christmas isn't for trouble or danger. That's what you think. Oh, you'll get out of this. Santa Claus is hollow, ain't it? What? They smuggle things in hollow things, don't they? A big operator like Suchek. Oh, look out! He'll break it! Good you. night, stupid! Oh, damn it, George! Oh! I couldn't reach it in time. I. There's nothing in it, though, is there? There's not much in Ferdy anymore, either. Oh, no. Please, Mrs. Suchek, stop it. I'm sorry. I can tell. Them. Listen to me. Quick. Did Farnham produce a girl who lived in that studio today? I don't want to see her. I don't want to know who she... Would your husband give a mirror with your initials on it to somebody else? And that lush apartment of yours down the hall, he hates what that stands for as much as you do, doesn't he? Oh, but you've both got to be so proud. But I'll get back to that other place, the other woman. The secret, simple thing in his life he escapes to sometimes, because I saw it. Yeah, I barged in. But I didn't see her. You what? But I saw her picture, all right. Yeah, a lovely blonde girl... Her clothes are old-fashioned. There's a French taxi cab in the background. Why don't you understand, Mrs. Suchek? That double life of his is about as sinister as this memory, this Santa Claus you picked to give him for Christmas. It's a picture of a girl who looks just like you about 20 years ago. Mrs. Suchek, the other woman is you. But, 
George, she's changed so much. Well, both of them did, Angel. They were miles apart, I guess. Only still not quite ready to forget a dream of what they used to be like, even though they wouldn't admit it. But all those packages of his, the other ones, those phony-looking shipments back and forth from <laughs> Europe... <laughs> Darling, your imagination's as bad as Ferdy's, the ex-elevator man. Hot goods, smuggling. Where do you get all these ideas? Why not believe the facts? The phone company said he was a small-scale importer. Now, express companies don't smuggle for people. A man could get a bank account from an honest business he was building up on the side. A man with the right background and rich friends to deal with. Yeah, You've well... listened to too many radio mysteries. Oh, I, I know I'm not clairvoyant. It was Farnham's behavior that made me curious, that's all. You mean being so anxious to make sure that Suchek never got the sentimental gift from his wife? The, the Santa Claus from their first Christmas tree together? Uh-huh. And then asking us not to dig any deeper. Not wanting her to see any more over at that studio than he'd already arranged for her to see in here. So you just barged right in. Oh, darling, you're wonderful. I'm lucky. I knew when Suchek hit me, nobody would have been that mad except a guy caught with his own sentiments down. Besides, you told me a long time ago, Christmas isn't for bad things. And you told me it's for a little faith in human nature. And you had it. Mr. Suchek's getting on his feet again, and his wife is opening her eyes, and they're really back together now. Sure, sure, sure. It's for happy endings. It's for mistletoe in the eyes, George. I like that line. Hmm. Well, you needn't turn your nose up at it. Not after all you've done Okay, today. Angel. I'll turn my nose down again. Come here. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Christmas is for not being bothered with details like, uh, like the smell of burning duck. Merry Christmas, everybody. This is John Heaston, hoping that your Christmas Day was everything you wanted it to be. Hoping you were with family and friends, and that you've heard from loved ones who were too far away to make the trip home. But just a moment, here's a friend of yours, George Valentine. Tonight, we'll introduce him by his real name, Robert Bailey. Holiday greetings are not my stock and trade. But if you think the job's too tough for me, well, I have news for you. Friends, it's wonderful. It's wonderful to be on the air with you this Christmas time. So, speaking for myself and for everybody in the cast, all I want to say is, we just hope you've had the nicest, happiest Christmas ever. Now here's a word from the sponsors of Let George Do It, from the Standard Oil Company of California, and from the men at independent Chevron gas stations and Standard stations. Here's what the message says. This is the fourth Christmas time we've been on the air with you. So at this very special time, we feel we're talking to old friends when we say to all of you, heartiest Christmas greetings. And thank you for listening. Good night, friends. Be with you again next week. Tonight's transcribed adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard Oil Company of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West. Robert Bailey is starred as George with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. Let George Do It is written by David Victor and Jackson Gillis and directed by Don Clark. Irene Tedrow was heard as Verna, Bob Griffin as Suchek, Larry Dobkin as Farnham, Barney Phillips as Ferdy, and Bob Bruce as the messenger. The music is composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter, your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It.
This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.